The thought of a movie or show taking place in a video game or in virtual reality is not really a new concept. But Free Guy takes this fairly normal concept and changes it up ever so slightly by making the main character of the story be a non-player character or an NPC played by Ryan Reynolds. An AI character named Guy that becomes self-aware and even more so throughout the whole story. Now going into this movie, I thought it was going to be an action comedy movie with a ton of random over the top stunts, and for the most part that holds pretty true. But there is a very deep emotional story that comes almost out of nowhere and I'll explain it more when we get there. This movie has a lot going for it, but one of the best things this movie did was make it based on a video game, so that's what I want to talk about first. Now when I say one of the best things this movie has going for it is that it's based in virtual reality, it's for a few reasons. For one, the stunts in the movie can have a chaotic nature yet still have a sense of reality because it's in a video game. And if you've played Grand Theft Auto Online, you will know that this movie is the embodiment of any interaction that you will have with any other player. Explosions, stealing cars, shooting pretty much everybody, terrorizing the NPCs, all of that. But you can eliminate the non-realistic part of the stunts strictly because you're in a video game, which means the same for the characters. Whether it be the NPCs or the quote-unquote glasses people, which are the actual real-world players, they can be injured. Badly. And it doesn't matter because they die and they come back. So you can make the deaths as brutal as you want, and they can happen to anyone, and you don't face any consequences for that. Which means there could be an end of the world scenario like the climax of this film, but in reality the stakes aren't that dire. You can even have a pet goldfish that lives in a bowl that he would definitely die in. So Free Guy is a movie about video game and gamers, but it's not a movie for just gamers. But for those of us who do play video games on the regular, there are so many different easter eggs for us to enjoy and laugh at. From health packs, to cosmetics, to the chaotic nature of an open world dynamic game itself, teabagging when you get a kill, even people having problems with maybe ping or frame rate just jumping against the wall in the background, portal guns, calling people noobs, leveling up and getting more weapons and gear, are all vital aspects of being a gamer. And yes, teabagging is vital, especially if you play Halo. So for those of us who play a lot of video games, we can find a lot of fun in the easter eggs that this movie provides. But the ones who don't can enjoy the chaotic nature of the story as well as the emotional story that fills the background of the overall plot. And I think they handle this extremely well in the film. Don't get me wrong, I love the video game based idea for this movie, but the emotional story behind it is what really drove it to being such a good movie for me. And I think that is what the main highlight of this film is, but let me explain. Towards the beginning of the film, during an interview between Millie and Keys, it drops a few subtle hints that will be very important later. Millie says that the thing that gets her up in the morning is a medium coffee with cream and two sugars, which if you remember, the coffee shop only sells coffee with cream and two sugars. Then Keyes says for him, it's code, it's hidden messages, which again will be very important later, but the foreshadowing is very subtle. In the game, when Guy first sees Millie, he falls in love with her as soon as he sees her, and we get to see their story unfold inside the game while the real life story takes place outside the game. Now the guy in charge of Free City is named Antoine. Millie and Keyes made a game which Antoine stole from them, so Millie's overall purpose is to basically find proof inside the game that it's still their game and not Antoine's. Guy goes on a journey to level up after his first meeting with Millie because she tells him to do so, because she believes that he is a playable character. After Guy takes her advice and goes to level up, their next meetup takes place when Guy comes to Millie's rescue, and Guy watches her in slow motion as she's taking out the Vikings and Cowboys and Ninjas who are there to stop them. The slow-mo and music eventually stop, but then pick back up as soon as they escape by driving the motorcycle out the window. Then once they're safe, Guy actually talks about how he felt trapped and stuck, because he doesn't realize that he's an AI that's gaining sentience. So of course he felt stuck in his programming, but Millie can relate to that. They then go for a walk and Guy asks if she likes ice cream, and he asks for bubblegum flavor ice cream which is his favorite in the world, which ironically is hers as well. They ponder about this fact about each other because nobody else likes bubblegum ice cream, they've never met someone else who does. And this is when Millie really starts to get attached to Guy. She tells stories about her past and then Guy wants to kiss her, and he does. And since this is in a video game, Millie has very odd feelings about it, but then wants to meet up in the real world, showing a real connection between her and Guy, someone that she thinks is a real player. That is until Keys knocks on the door and tells her that he isn't, that he's an AI. And although it does prove that Antoine did steal their code from their game, she hates this news because Guy is not a real person. Someone that she is interested in, and is interested in her, is not real. She then has to go through the process of telling Guy that he is not real, that his whole world and life are inside of a game inside of the real world, and that he is a background character. He says that he loves Millie, but she replies that it's because it's in his programming, that's why he loves her. The reason that he feels that way is not real. Guy responds by saying that he might not be real, but for a while there he felt alive, and it was after they met. 
After Guy's whole world comes crashing down, he goes to his best friend Buddy to get a pep talk about helping the ones you love, because what is more real than that? After the successful pep talk, they then go to get the video clip that Millie was looking for. Antoine, not liking what Guy is doing for the free city community, resets the servers which resets Guy's AI protocol. Millie desperately tries to snap him back to where he was before, but she fails, so Keyes sends her a video about what could be another way to bring him back. The video is about why Guy comes to life in the first place. Guy was programmed specifically to never meet his true love, and his one true love is designed after Key's partner, which is Millie. After Millie learns that she is the key to bringing him back to life, she cuts the video short and immediately goes back to try to snap him back again. After talking doesn't work, a kiss does. It reignites the memories he had before it reset. So earlier when Millie said that the only reason that he feels like he's in love with her is because it's in his programming, it was before she found out that it was in fact a part of his programming to fall in love with her specifically. Keys programmed him to fall in love with Millie specifically and that's what brings him to life. After Guy is able to show the world that Keys and Millie's game is still hidden in Free City, Keys tries to shoot his shot and asks Millie if she wants to go grab some coffee. She replies with saying that she wants to play the game, but Keys knows exactly what she wants from the coffee shop before she says it. Millie then goes to say goodbye to Guy and finds it really hard, like saying goodbye to someone that she loves. Guy walks her through the process of saying goodbye and Guy says that he loves her and that it might be in his coding, but someone wrote that code. And someone in the real world is sending her a love letter. A hidden message. She finishes the video that she cut off earlier and learns about Key's love for her. About how he designed Guy specifically to fall in love with her. The coffee shop in Free City only sells Millie's favorite kind of coffee. And Guy's favorite ice cream is Millie's favorite ice cream as well. He was programmed to love her as Keys does. So she runs to the cafe where he's going to get them coffee and just with the exchange of looks, they both know exactly what the other one is feeling. And this moment kind of comes out of nowhere and hits like a ton of bricks. The buildup of their love story is so subtle and gradual over the entire movie you almost don't see it being pieced together. And it is a beautiful moment when it finally happens. And that's why I think that Free Guy is one of the most unexpected emotional journeys that I've ever seen in a movie. Now there aren't many things that I dislike about this film, but there are a few things. There's a few spots where the jokes are a little too PC for me, and the scenes where the real life streamers and YouTubers have lines really take me out of the film. Like they don't fit in at all. It's like me being recruited to play professional basketball in the NBA. It just doesn't seem natural. But one of the PC quote unquote jokes that I didn't like is that one mentioned that Keys had white privilege. It just kind of seemed to come out of nowhere. And I think Taiga Watiti was trying a little bit too hard to be unlikable as Antoine, but those are just my small nitpicks. Other than that, this movie does have a lot of good things going for it. Buddy is a very welcomed side character and I loved pretty much every line that he had. And he's even a pretty good emotional support character for Guy. He gives him the pep talk about helping the ones you love and he's the only person to come help save Guy from Dude. And he talks about being the best day of his life on his quote unquote deathbed, but thank God he comes back in the end. And if there's a sequel, which I kind of hope there isn't, I'm glad Buddy will be in it. Owen oh, Dude in this movie is hilarious. And honestly, I wish I got to see more of him because I'd pay for a full movie of just Dude. And you know I couldn't do this video without mentioning the very subtle, almost unnoticeable Marvel references. Yeah, that's pretty subtle, but I also love seeing it. And I love seeing Chris Evans in it. Also, I like when dude gets the glasses on him, the item that's highlighted is whey protein. That's a nice touch. Ooh, if there is a sequel, it needs to be a spinoff with Buddy and Dude doing something together. That dynamic would be hysterical to see. Free Guy is easily one of the most memorable experiences I've had in recent years when it comes to seeing a movie in theaters. The person who watched the movie with me said it was unexpectedly good and that it had a lot of emotion that was hidden throughout the story, and I couldn't agree more. This movie really came off as an action comedy with really over the top stuns just because it could get away with it. While watching the trailers, I never really expected to have such an emotional response to this film. Ironically, like another Ryan Reynolds movie. Deadpool 2 was an action comedy movie that had a really heart tearing, tear inducing moment that I really didn't expect. And I don't know if it has to do with Ryan Reynolds helping with the script or the portrayal of his characters in general, but Free Guy is definitely an emotional journey that I think deserves more attention. So this one deserves an 8 out of 10. But thank you all for watching, and as always, have a marvelous day.